we are going to make a trip to Italy and look at the geography of Italy. So here we are in the United States and right about there is where Indianapolis is. Time to turn the globe here and I want to straighten it up a little bit. There we go. there. All right. And I'm zooming in. Let me zoom back out again. Here we are. We're looking at the at the globe and remember Europe is separated from Africa down here by the Mediterranean Sea. When we went before, we went to Greece, but now we're going to Italy. And Italy is going to be pretty easy to find because I want you to look down into the Mediterranean Sea and see if you can't see something that looks like a foot, a boot sticking down there. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Whoop. Here we go. And whoa, there it is. A boot with a terribly destroyed soccer ball right there. That is Italy. That is Italy. I'm going to rotate the globe a little bit so it's easier for us to see it. And one of the things I want you to notice is here, this little soccer ball is called Sicily. Okay, I'm going to move it in a little bit. This is Sicily. And here is the coast of North Africa with the city of Tunis. Look how close, look how close Sicily is to North Africa. This is as close or closer than Cuba is to Florida. And we'll come back to talking about this because in modern times, one of the problems is that many people who are suffering from bad lives in, in northern Africa have been hopping on boats and just sort of trying to go across the Mediterranean and wash up on the shores of Sicily. But before we do that, let's look at Italy itself. Uh, and I think we'll try to pull ourselves in even a little more and we'll move up to northern Italy up here and this is northern Italy and you can begin to see up here there's a mountain range and this mountain range is the Alps okay this is literally going to cut Italy off from most of Europe you can go across here and over into this area uh, and you can go down here into this part which is the southern part of France but to just go right up into Italy uh, into Europe from Italy or to come down from Europe into Italy is difficult this has advantages and disadvantages it means that all the wild tribes that lived up here in northern in Europe the no north of Italy could not easily come down into Italy. So the Italian tribes that s settled along here in Italy were ones that were able to um, were able to live a little more isolated than they would have otherwise. Now you can see all of Italy here the lines are showing rather well here so you can see that these lines go right up along the Alps the Alps act there's the Alps right there inside the green I'm showing you the Alps inside the green lines there those are the Alps now they act as a border as we said and then when you get down here you get into what's called the Po Valley and the Po River moves through here and once again you can see that there are some low-lying mountains that are coming right down through Italy clear down through here to the very end and they actually extend out a little bit into Sicily these are the Apennines and they're going to divide Italy's west coast from its east coast here's the west coast here's the east coast this is the Adriatic Sea right here this is t the Tyrrhenian Sea right here this is the spine of Italy right here so that when you see movement in Italy it's going to be 
as with any peninsula, up and down along the coast. We saw that that the mountains in Greece over here created uh, localized communities. They're going to do some of that here, but it's not going to be quite as extensive as it was over here in Greece. The most important city in Italy that we're going to be concerned about, because we are talking about ancient Rome after all, is going to be Rome. So let's pull ourselves in on that. Here is Rome right here. And if we can move in a little more, as we move in, we begin to see that there's a river. Here's a river right here that's going up, 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 and it comes up to Rome up here. That river is the Tiber River. You can see it right there. And now you begin to see the modern city of Rome spread out across the, the space here. And you can see how the Tiber River is the boundary, sort of the western boundary of Rome. During the early times, this area right here that I'm moving my, that I'm moving things around, was the Mars Hill, uh, and the seven, the seven hills of Rome are over in here. This is the Vatican, Vatican Hill, and the Vatican City over here. It's a sovereign state, inside of Rome actually. It's where the Holy See is located. That is the, the, the Pope's residence and his private city. But you can see that now, today, Rome extends way over on the west bank of the river. Let me pull back out again. And we'll take a look again at this. Now, when I do this, you can see what are the modern provinces of Italy. Tuscany is one of the important provinces of Italy, and its major city is Florence. And then up here, we have what's called the Veneto, and this is where Venice is located. See right here? This is bringing up Venice. This is the city of Venice. In fact, let's just let's just home in on Venice for a second because what you're seeing is a lagoon here and then you've got a city a city that's sitting right out here Venice right out here and there are bridges that are coming across to it the lagoon here's the entrance to the lagoon this is the Adriatic and see it says Lagoon Venice here in Italian this is the modern city of Venice, but this is also the medieval city of Venice. And even back in Roman times, there was a city of Venice here. I'm pulling back out. This whole area up here, clear down to this area, was Etruscan. This area around Rome, and down here like this, is where the Latins, the people who were to become the Romans, were located another group of people here and then this whole area down along here was settled by the Greeks and you can see it's not too hard to get across from Greece to here and and make contact with this area so the Greeks settled this area the fact that Roman culture is going to reflect in many ways Greek culture is a result of the fact that the Greeks settled the southern part here and their religion and some of their culture found their way up through the peninsula as far as the Latins. So here we see Italy as it is. These islands over here are actually part of Italy too. Corsica and Sardinia, but at that time in ancient Rome, at the time of ancient Rome, they were just islands off the coast. Rome, because of its location in the central part of Italy, on the Tiber River becomes the important center in the Italian peninsula. The Etruscans are up here, the others are down here, the trade has to go through where? Rome. So Rome is an important trade center. Even if it started out as a little agricultural village, it quickly becomes an important trade center. 
Obviously, with all this shoreline, Italy, like Greece, is going to be a maritime nation to a certain extent. That means people are going to be taking to the sea. That's particularly true over here on the Adriatic side. And finally, I want to talk about this area right along here. This is called the Dalmatian Coast. And this is important because this area right over here, all of this, and I'm moving my mouse around all of this to help you, is, is what was called Illyrium in Roman times. Notice how it's north of Greece here, Illyrium. And it, while Rome started out and was ruled by Romans, we'll see when we get to the to the period of the later emperors that many of them came from Illyrium over here. All right, and you can see once again, I want to I, I, let me try to get that thing to show it again. Once again, a mountainous region here that that is um, going to block access necessarily or quickly to the interior. And this coastline here, all along here, if you visit these areas today, you see many Roman ruins in these areas. And that's because the Illyrian emperors often didn't like to stay in Rome and they built palaces and everything over here that they lived in. Do you think that you can find Italy on the globe? Now, we're using we're using Google Earth to do this. So you might try firing up Google Earth on a computer and seeing if you can turn the globe around and find Italy.